Many ancient sites found all over the world can no longer be explained away with currently attested academic opinion. Who they say built them, why, or when they were created. The most popular of these anomalies are the ancient monuments that can be found upon the Giza Plateau. Currently explained as having been built by our copper tool-wielding ancestors a mere 4,000 years ago, somehow successfully creating some of the most precisely built and indeed enormous ancient structures found on Earth, decidedly choosing to use granite blocks many tons in weight as their building material of choice. Ironically, although these sites are somehow exclaimed as having been built by the ancient Egyptians, any actual, literal explanation of how this was actually done has never been provided. Not only is academic opinion severely lacking any logical understandings as to the construction of these sites, they seemingly attempt to ignore and, in some cases, conceal additional controversial anomalies they simply cannot understand. Enormous stone megaliths are hidden all over Giza, and especially around the base of the Great Pyramids. And not only were these buildings adorned with incredibly hard granite, but also basalt, a similarly tough stone, and another which would be near impossible to have hewn with mere copper implements. Known as Giza's basalt floor, it is what many people now see as the smoking gun for evidence of advanced engineering having once been responsible for the construction of the site. Amongst the remaining fragments of the basalt floor is overwhelming evidence of ancient machinery, telltale precision signatures left on many stones, suggesting high technology was responsible for the shaping of Giza's enormous stones. Cut marks that could only have been left by high-speed disc cutting, striations, precise ridges and countless other curious features have been thankfully left upon these stones, and these surviving tool marks could one day be used to actually identify the technology once used to build the site. We now feel that the evidence to suggest that the modern attested and mass-published theories regarding the origins of the Giza Plateau, its age, and indeed its creator's past capabilities, is currently incorrect and is now overwhelming, and that it is only a matter of time before a revival of this past knowledge and indeed understandings again begins to flourish. The Oklahoma newspaper, The Oklahoman, would publish a story on June 28, 1969, titled It's a Cracked Puzzle. Subsequently pulled from their archives, some astute researchers, however, have managed to track down this amazing article detailing an impossible discovery. It pertains to the excavation of an ancient floor, a tiled area which covered a truly vast distance, as if it was once the highly finished floor of an enormous structure. What is astonishing regarding this floor, however, is the date that countless specialists have concluded upon. The age of these tiles is simply baffling. According to the modern dating techniques used, this floor was laid well over 200,000 years ago using a tiling mortar containing currently unknown elements. Delbert Smith, president of the Oklahoma Seismograph Company and past president of the Oklahoma City Geophysical Society, accompanied Derwood Pate, an independent petroleum geologist, in an exploration of the site. They finished their studies by stating that they were both very satisfied that it is not a natural earth formation and that it is, indeed, man-made. Smith and Pate even took core samples to make a microscopic investigation of the material makeup. The discovery of two holes through the rock strata heightened interests, and when measurements revealed the two holes to be exactly 16 and a half feet apart, or precisely one rod, they were convinced it was a deliberate artificial placement. The stone tiles were found to have been made from Permian limestone, laced with quartz grains. Geologists who focused their attention on the unusual flooring were all at a loss to explain the origin of the formation. John M. Ware, an Oklahoma City geologist, said, It simply cannot be explained within the field of geology. We need an archaeologist to give a final opinion. However, its age and origin may remain a mystery unless an archaeologist can be persuaded to take on the project soon. 
Just 20 days after these astonishing finds and subsequent realizations, construction workers moved in on the area, quickly demolishing the enormously ancient and vastly important floor, building a foodstuffs warehouse in its place. Pate said that the formation, 100 feet by 60 feet in area, was rapidly becoming a tourist attraction. People began flocking there and taking pieces of the rock away, he said. Just who built this ancient floor? Why did they build it? And was it really over 200,000 years old? Judging by the way this discovery was buried, it is certainly a possibility. When asked what are the largest, heaviest, and indeed the once most difficult stones to ever have been cut, transported to, and precisely placed within the great structures of the Giza Plateau, we would have previously stated that the granite ceiling blocks found within the King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid were the largest known, with some of these stones weighing as much as 100 tons. However, it turns out that there exist many other stones upon this mysteriously created plateau, which far exceed the pyramid's inner megaliths. Unsurprisingly, these discoveries are rarely shared academically, or indeed to the many people who pay to visit the Giza Plateau each year. The Valley Temple is but one example of these other, less mentioned, marvelously enormous stones, eight of which are still present within the structure's ruin the largest of which still being roughly 3 by 3 by 6 meters in size. Furthermore, the same similarly sized stones can also be found within the Kefren Pyramid Causeway Temple. The structure is also rarely discussed or shared by Egyptologists or archaeologists alike. It seems that academics who fear a loss of funding from particular bodies tend to merely ignore that which they are confronted with which they simply cannot explain. Again, the same enigmatic megalithic blocks can be found in the causeway temple of the Miserinus Pyramid. One finds the same highly eroded, thus extremely ancient stones. It seems that these huge stones seemingly litter the Giza complex, and amazingly, they are successfully ignored merely due to their controversy. Yet, the largest to be found anywhere upon this man-made plateau are to be found hidden in plain sight. Overlooked for many millennia, the still remaining foundation stones, upon which much of the east side of the Kefren Pyramid once stood, were not lifted into place, but were indeed transported to this location and precisely placed into position. These stones are so massive and so perfectly dropped into the surrounding landscape that thousands of people have walked right over them every year without ever realizing what they were standing on. Although the true depth and thus complete scale of the block is currently unknown, if it is of a cubic shape, it would appear to be roughly three-quarters the weight of the pregnant woman of Baalbek. She weighs around 1,001 tons, which would make our foundation stone anywhere from 500 to 750 tons in weight. Clearly, a controversial yet incredible discovery, one which takes our understandings of the sheer undertaking that was Giza, are still at an early stage. Nonetheless, such discoveries move us one step closer towards finally understanding just who could have built the Great Pyramid Complex of Egypt. Hey guys, so I'm sure you're aware of the Nazca Lines of Peru, the enormous drawings found upon the land created using a vast array of subjects. What is especially interesting regarding these ancient lines found all over the world is that to truly appreciate the images, you would have to view them from space. Some of the drawings are even waving, leading many to wonder over the years regarding their original purpose. The largest lines can be found in Bolivia. Known as the Sajama Lines, they were clearly constructed by an intelligent force. Many theories regarding the original function of the lines have been put forward over the years, though to this day, the actual purpose remains a mystery. Covering an area of approximately 22,525 square kilometers, they're truly massive. Each individual line is around 3 meters wide, with the longest measuring over 20 kilometers in length. However, amazingly, the largest known drawing of one subject is actually a modern creation and it is a drawing of a man. 
called the Mari Man or Stewart's Giant. It was discovered by Trek Smith on the 26th of June 1998. A charter pilot flying between Mari and Cooper Petty in the vast remote bushlands of southern Australia. Created deep in the outback, far away from civilization, the creators of this gigantic drawing remain a complete mystery. 4.2 kilometers tall and with a perimeter of over 28 kilometers, due to the massive undertaking these lines would have been, the huge resources they demanded on the land and in the air, the fact that no one saw it being created or additionally reported it, its creation will remain extremely perplexing. To create such an image, a fleet of vehicles would have been required, a system of radio communication and a team of individuals to create it. All this completed within a dry, remote, unforgiving corner of the Australian outback, without telling anyone that it's there? The Mari Man depicts an indigenous Australian man hunting with a boomerang or stick. It lies on a plateau at Finnis Springs, 60 kilometers west of the township of Mari in central South Australia. Was the Mari Man made by extraterrestrial visitors to our planet as a form of orbital indication to what inhabits the planet? Although the mystery of the Mari Man may be a new one, it's just as confusing as ancient lines. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Did the Great Sphinx once witness the bottom of a sea? There is evidence. Things we have covered on this channel in the past which would suggest just that. Who built these astounding structures found dotted all over the earth? When were they built? Were they really, like academia would like you to believe, built by primitive civilizations with the use of primitive tools, often made of copper and notoriously soft metal? Or is there a possibility that these structures were made by a far more ancient, far more capable, world-traversing civilization? Built in areas of geological interest, most often the center of a landmass or placed upon key lines? Although there is a large number of artifacts and archaeological factors which strongly suggest this exact scenario of events, we feel there is one collection of artifacts, or rather evidence of this people's past existence, which just like their clear originally intended function, could tie these monuments neatly together. Known as the missing ancient metal clamps, given their predicted age and metallic composition, the fact that they are no more should come as no surprise. However, the carved seats that these clamps once sat within are still present in the stonework of many ancient structures found all over the world. Within our own modern-day society, a society that can travel the world in a day and speak to the other side in an instant, technological advances are often copied or shared between nations. The concepts being the same, yet the manufacture slightly differing in form, and the metal clamps display this exact phenomena. Slight variations in manufacture that can be seen dependent on the landmass the ruin is found upon, yet the concept behind the construction of these amazing and perplexing structures, often constructed using blocks we have no explanation as to the placement of, remain the same worldwide. Dry stone walling often accompanied by these clamps made with such skill, the blocks are now often perceived to have been made to measure. The builders were clearly very aware of shifting, which can be seen, as blocks settled over the following years. This offers a presumption that these structures were intended to last many centuries, if not millennia, and the metal clips were also designed to indeed rust away to nothing after their function was served. Amazingly, it seems that out of the countless thousands used, a few of the clamps have somehow managed to survive. The clamps from pre-Columbian South America that have been examined show them to be made of a very unusual alloy. 2% arsenic, 95% copper, with traces of iron, silicon, and nickel. This composition is particularly interesting within Puma Punca because there is no source nickel anywhere in Bolivia. The clips are clearly a compelling link between these ancient structures found all over the world, but more importantly, the builders of them. These amazing artifacts clearly deserve much more attention. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care.